Okay, it's 11.05. Let's get started. Um, I'm Keith Elliston, the CEO of the Transmart Foundation. This is our monthly uh, community call. Uh, Kevin Smith, uh, unfortunately, is not joining us. Kevin usually runs the call. <clears throat> She'll have to bear with Terry and I as we work through the issues. Kevin has a very practiced hand, and we're not quite so practiced at this. Uh, we have a, a, a good meeting today in terms of giving people an update on, on what we're doing. I'll lay out the agenda for you quickly. We're going to focus today on, uh, on the issue du jour, which is the uh, version 1.2 uh, testing and development process. Uh, I'll give you a quick update on some of the things happening at the foundation, but we'll spend most of our time talking about version 1.2 activities. Uh, we're going to go through the, the 1.2 status and update. Uh, Terry Weymouth will be giving us a, a quick update on uh, how the bug fixing is, is being tracked and, and what kind of progress we're making there, etc. Uh, then we'll talk a little bit about the launch plan, Rudy Potent Zone, uh, uh, from the foundation. We'll be talking to us about what the launch plans are, how that will be executed, what the key issues are there. Uh, he'll update us also on the rebranding of the foundation uh, that we're putting in place uh, concurrent with the uh, launching of the version 1.2. And then uh, we'll talk a bit about the annual meeting coming up in October, uh, which has now been moved from, uh, from Baltimore to Ann Arbor, uh, just due to facilities availability. We'll end up with uh, questions and comments. Uh, please feel free uh, to post questions in the question box on the GoToWebinar uh, control panel. Um, if you have any qu comments or anything you'd like to make, uh, there's a raise your hand button. You can raise your hand and uh, we'll uh, unmute your mics and, uh, and let you talk from there. Uh, otherwise, um, if your mic is, is unmuted uh, for now, I'd ask everyone to mute their mics just to keep the background noise to a minimum. Uh, and we'll get started. Uh, from a foundation perspective, just to give you a, a quick set of updates, I'll give you the high-level overview. Uh, the version 1.2 uh, testing uh, process is on track. We had the uh, release of the uh, testing version of the platform uh, at the end of June, and we've been working through a three phases of sprints uh, towards releasing the production release on August 1st. Um, one of the key issues that's come up uh, that we'll be addressing uh, over the next few weeks is uh, the content committee is taking on the issue of deciding which data uh, will be included in the demo version uh, for the production release. Uh, we've had over 50 data sets contributed by various members and uh, we're going through to decide which of those data uh, should or, or will be included in the uh, demo versions of the platform. Uh, our goal there is to make sure that there's sufficient content for people to work on the various different aspects of the platform, the different functions that have been added uh, but not to, to overburden the platform with too much data. Uh, secondly, the code committee uh, has been engaged uh, on a key issue around the production of virtual machine images. What we found with version 1.1 is that uh, many people in our community uh, have been uh, first exposed to the, found, to the, the platform uh, through the use of virtual machine images. Uh, they're pre-configured, uh, have data and databases loaded, uh, and work right out of the box. Uh, or the virtual box, as you might say. And uh, uh, what we're working through is engaging the code committee uh, in a working group underneath that to help us configure those virtual machine images so that they have uh, the most optimal configuration in terms of operating systems and, and various uh, assistant applications, and et cetera. So those are two key activities that are ongoing. If you want to be involved in some of those discussions, I'd suggest you contact uh, the head of the content committee, uh, those are, are Brian Athey and Cyril Monasheron. Uh, or if you want have an interest on the virtual machine image configuration, you can speak with E.K. Go or, uh, or Jay Bergeron. Uh, the second key thing for us is that uh, it's Happy New Year. Uh, the, the foundation operates on uh, a fiscal year that runs from July 1st uh, to the end of June. Uh, so we started our new fiscal year this month, uh, which means a new budget year. Uh, lots of new uh, beginning of year activities for us. So it's a, it's a happy new year for the foundation. Um, and as we're working through uh, various things, we're kicking off a number of key initiatives that we do on a fiscal year basis. Uh, one of these that's most important for us is the membership program. So uh, we kicked off uh, the 2015 membership drive. Uh, we're recruiting uh, new members to the foundation and I would ask that uh, anyone that has an interest in joining the foundation, uh, now is the time to get engaged. Uh, what we found is that uh, if we start uh, with the beginning of our fiscal year, 
uh, many of our members have uh, calendar fiscal years and that we can get things completed by the end of your calendar year. Uh, and so what I'd ask is anyone who has an interest in joining the foundation, please contact me directly, Keith Ellison, uh, or Kevin Smith, our community manager, uh, and let us know and we'll, we'll get you engaged in, in, uh, in that process. Uh, also for existing members, I will be going through the renewal process for existing members. Uh, our membership is a 12-month uh, annual renew annually renewing membership program. Uh, so we'll be beginning that process given that uh, many member companies have a significant lead time in, in getting approvals for these things. So as I said, it's a, it's a brand new year. Uh, we're kicking off the membership program and, uh, and things are moving forward from there. Uh, finally, in terms of foundation governance, uh, we have quarterly board meetings. Uh, we have uh, our uh, meeting for this quarter, which is our first quarter of the year, uh, on July 16th, which is tomorrow. Uh, so our board will be convening, uh, going through a number of uh, key issues that we've uh, we brought up around the version 1.2 development and, and other key activities of the foundation. Uh, that will be a virtual meeting for those uh, board members that may be attending, and uh, you have the, uh, the webinar uh, information. Uh, secondly, just want to keep people updated that we, uh, our executive committee has been established and is now meeting on a monthly basis. Uh, the executive committee is a smaller group of the board. Our board is organized into uh, three committees. Uh, two of these are operational committees. One is on finance and audit, the second on uh, governance and nominations. Uh, those two committees have been uh, initiated. Uh, they're led by uh, Brett Davis leading finance and uh, Matteo Di Tommaso leading the governance and nominations. And uh, those two committee chairs uh, with our chairman of the board, uh, Gil Oman, uh, form our executive committee, which uh, I meet with on a monthly basis to address any, uh, any foundation issues that we have going forward. So uh, one of the key things we wanted to do in, in uh, the past year is really stand up the foundation, establish all of our governance and practices and I'm happy to report that things are, are going very, very well uh, in that perspective. Uh, I wanted to turn attention to the, the version 1.2 and spend most of our time here. This has uh, been the, the key activity the Foundation has been engaged in over the past few months. Uh, I think we're all uh, anxiously awaiting the production release of version 1.2 and I want to uh, make sure everyone is up to date on, on what the process is and what the progress is. Uh, first of all, uh, version 1.2 uh, contains uh, a large number of code contributions from across our community. Uh, if you recall, the, the main thesis for version 1.2 has been to take features developed on various distinct code branches and integrate those into a single code branch so that we have a, a branch to grow from uh, as a community. Um, the other key feature of version 1.2 is it combines the, uh, the, the database functionality such that all the features work on both Oracle uh, and on Postgres. And so we have a completely open source version running on Postgres. And then uh, for those uh, who are running the Oracle platform, we have uh, an Oracle version with exactly the same functionality. Uh, we have contributions coming from across the community. Uh, there have been those coming from uh, Converge Health by Deloitte, uh, from Pfizer, Imperial College and Etrix, the Hive and Trait, uh, Sanofi uh, with their RC1 and RC2, uh, combining, I think it's a total of 11 code branches uh, into one, uh, one main branch. So all that combination was done uh, uh, a few months ago and we focused on building the data warehouse to include all the data in the, the key functionality there uh, so that we can now do all the testing on each of these functions. The new functions that have been added to the platform include uh, browse and search, uh, high dimensional data types, uh, serial or longitudinal data types, uh, GWAS, improved sample handling, um, various ETL enhancements as getting data into the platform is really critical, uh, support for unstructured data, uh, a number of new uh, analysis approaches as well as cross-study analysis, um, a really beautiful integration with the genome browser, uh, that's one of my favorites, and uh, the Galaxy integration uh, and more. So there's a, a lot of new functionality that everyone will see with the platform. In fact, it's a it's almost a completely new application in terms of uh, going from version 1.1 to 1.2. Um, the, the other key thing that we've been working on is loading the platform with data to test all these new features. Uh, we've had a number of data sets contributed. In fact, it's uh, over 50 data sets now that have been contributed by the community 
uh, to fill out the data warehouse in such ways so that we can test all of these various features. Uh, we've had data contributed from uh, Converge Health, from CTMM Trait, uh, through the Hive, uh, from Etrix, um, particularly including the University of Luxembourg uh, as part of Etrix, Imperial College, uh, as well as Pfizer. Uh, Rancho Biosciences has been uh, very generous in, in providing data. Uh, Sanofi and their partner Cognizant uh, and Thomson Reuters. If I've missed anyone here has contributed data, please let me know. Uh, but it's been a, a real outpouring of support in bringing data to the platform so that we have the sufficient data to test all of the functionality that's been brought to the platform. As I said, there are over 50 contributed data sets. Uh, these include uh, a large number of data sets from GEO, as we're all familiar with, but also from MAGIC, various GWAS data that comes from there, uh, metabolomics data, proteomics data, uh, quantitative PCR, uh, microRNA, uh, serial high dimensional data, VCF, uh, etc. So there's a, a lot of very diverse data that's included uh, in, in the testing uh, platform. This has raised one of the key issues that the content committee is now focused on and, and will resolve uh, prior to the production release. Uh, but it's, it's which of these data, if any, or, uh, or not, or additional data, should be distributed with the package. In the past, the platform has been distributed with a minimal set of data so that uh, one can take a virtual machine image and can run the platform and test it on data that's already been loaded. Um, as we're all aware of, uh, curating and uh, loading data into the platform is, uh, is a labor-intensive uh, process. And having demo data that's in there that allows people to test all the functionality before they make big investments, and that is, is really critical. So we're going through all the data that's been contributed and ensuring that we have uh, the right data, that we have uh, the right quality of data, and that we have all the right uh, rights to the data that are being distributed. Um, so that's a, just a key issue that uh, people should be focused on. And I would encourage you that if you have any thoughts in this area or you'd like to participate in some of these discussions, uh, this is being uh, organized by our content committee, uh, again, led by Brian Nathy and, and Sarah Monosheron from Thompson Reuters. The testing uh, sprints have really been focused on uh, volunteers that have come in to, to help test the various functionality. Um, as we were putting things together with the development, the development group has been a relatively tight uh, group of people. And what we brought to this is uh, over 50 different volunteers from across the community to help in the functional testing and data loading and testing. And I'd just like to call out uh, a number of groups that have been uh, really helping out in this process. Uh, number one, BT Global Services has made uh, their platform available to the foundation uh, for uh, building the various instances that we're using, and uh, in particular, David Brown has been really fantastic in, in helping set these up and run these. So uh, everything that we're doing on the development side has been taking advantage of that uh, BT Global Services platform. Uh, we have a number of contributors from Cognizant uh, through Sanofi. Uh, Converge Health has been providing a lot of uh, key background and, and effort and in fact helped us recruit a couple of individuals, including uh, Chris Ulrich, who's been working quite diligently in the platform. Uh, CTMM Trait, uh, the Curie Institute of Paris. Um, we have uh, uh, Etrix, including a number of the Etrix contributors, uh, Bayer, um, various number of acronyms, which I don't quite understand all of them, uh, including IDBS, Imperial College, J&J, Merck, uh, University of Luxembourg, and others. Uh, we've had a number of key contributors from Harvard University, from the Hive, uh, OSR Data, Pfizer, Rancho, Sanofi, TR, uh, University of Michigan, and others. Um, again, if I've missed anyone here, uh, please let me know. But we have had a great outpouring of, of volunteers to help in this process. Um, what I will say is that uh, the opportunity to volunteer is still there. Um, you'll see when we, when we end our discussion of what we're doing, uh, we still have a need for volunteers to come in and help test in the platform to identify various bugs for us so the development team can, can quickly resolve those issues. To give you a sense of the schedule, um, we kicked off <coughs> the community testing release on June 20th. Uh, that is now out there. <coughs> um, the first sprint that we put together, the first of three sprints, and, and as EK has called it, the 40 days of testing, um, and I'll I'll vouch that it actually is 40 days and 40 nights uh, as people are working through the evening and night hours. Um, so the first sprint has been focused on data loading and ETL. And while I'll say that that sprint is, is completed, it is overlapping, and there's continued work on data loading and ETL development. Uh, so these sprints do overlap each other. 
Uh, we began uh, last week the sprint on functional testing and debugging. Uh, anyone who would like to be engaged in that functional testing and debugging, please uh, volunteer. Uh, speak with Terry Weymouth or Peter Rice, uh, and you can be engaged in that functional testing. And the final uh, sprint will begin on July 21st is really on deployment and implementation testing. The final stage we need to make sure that we have all the key elements so that the platform can be readily deployed and implemented. Uh, configurations uh, are recommended based upon the requirements of the platform and the data that's included as well as the production of various virtual machine images. Um, I'm going to turn things over to, to Terry Weymouth, who has uh, been really working with us as a project manager to help keep a lot of these things going in the testathon, the various hackathons, the testathon, and, and now the testing phase. Uh, and so, Terry, if you'd take us through a little bit of, of what you've been doing there, uh, what the community has sure. been doing, some of the resources available, that'd be fantastic. Not a problem. Um, in front of you, uh, wiki.transmartfoundation.org is the uh, active live document source for all things uh, having to do with version 1.2. Uh, you can see, for example, on the right that there's a list of features, dependencies, and plugins, and so on. Especially the testing and quality assurance under testing details, there are a number of pages that get updated on a daily basis uh, describing uh, where we're at. Um, okay, next slide. Um, we're also using uh, an interactive chat tool called HipChat. Um, I have it in front of me right now, and um, that provides us with real-time feedback on problems that arise and uh, getting fixes from the community of developers especially. Um, and that's been uh, very helpful. Next slide. Um, okay, that's really a duplication of what I said about the wiki. Um, just. Uh, yeah, and then we have uh, dived into details of testing. Um, we linked linked from the wiki page is this Google document um, spreadsheet that has links to all of the specific test scripts, and you can see um, testers have signed up for test scripts. They've um, uh, claimed claimed a starting date and in many cases have actually conducted the test and either succeeded or failed. When the tests are failed, that information gets annotated in our uh, JIRA uh, issue board and those are, that JIRA issue board is being, uh, what, next slide, I think is JIRA, yeah, is being, is the source of active and ongoing bug fixes. Um, where the developers come to this, uh, we have four phone meetings a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. We talk about the testing, we talk about development. We On Friday, we assign a new set of tasks for the coming week. And these um, tasks are pulled off of the backlog and put into the assigned to people, and uh, bugs have been being fixed. Next slide. This is just the the actual active board from I don't know when, but uh, a little while back, just showing you that this is how the developers see the issues in JIRA, which issues are set up for this week to be done, which issues are actually being worked on, which, which issues have been resolved. Next slide. This is a diagram for the last 30 days showing in red the issues that have been created, and in green, the issues that have been resolved. Both both of these are cumulative, but what's interesting here is that we're actually, not only are we fixing bugs as they arrive, but we're eating into the backlog of bugs that from before 30 days ago. So we're actually driving the total number of bugs down as well as keeping our hands uh, keeping on top of the uh, new bugs that are being created. Next slide. And this is just a snapshot of um, a developer activity. You can see that it's fairly evenly distributed among our participants. Um, the uh, core developers listed here um, 
and the number of issues resolved in the last 30 days. Next slide. I just want to chime in on this one, Terry. I, I think what's very yeah. impressive on this is to see the, the spread of, of contributions across the development community. This is not just a, you know, uh, not just an e effort, not just a trade effort, not just a, um, you know, a, a University of Michigan and, and other efforts, yeah. but in fact, everybody is participating and participating very deeply. And this yeah. is, a, you know, I have to say it's one of my favorite slides that I've seen of, of, of all the things that we've looked at over the last few months. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, next slide. So uh, to date, we've loaded most of the data. Um, there's a small amount of data that, that needs to be loaded still, but there's definitely enough data to test all of the features in the system. Most of the major issues, certainly the merging um, and most of the major issues have been identified. We're at that frontier of, whoa, we didn't know that would, that would not work, but, um, and which is really exciting. This is where developers want to be. Um, so there is, in fact, a working version of the system that you can test if you would like to be involved in this uh, leading edge, what, what do they call that, bleeding edge work of testing the uh, current version. Um, and if you're interested in doing that, please contact either Peter, Peter Rice or myself. Um, we'll get you on the list of testers, get you a link to the test site, um, and give you a little bit of background about how to do testing. Next, next slide. Um, there is, of course, still much left to do. And uh, as I said, we're, we're finishing up a little bit of the data loading. Uh, there's one query broken on the indexing the, of documents that provides for faceted search. Um, we are investigating whether we want to upgrade Postgres and R. Um, we have to finish running the test scripts. That's the task for the remaining part of this week. Um, we are seeking assistance um, in getting uh, the scripts for data loading to compiled. Peter Rice is the go-to person for that. In uh, help with what we call unscripted testing, that is you just sit down at the um, at the web application and try to do something intelligent with it. Um, and uh, we need help with browser compatibility testing. Um, we'll give you a URL and you can have at it with any browser you'd like. And um, we definitely need help with contributions to the documentation. We'll be asking people to help with that as time goes on. That's the end of my spiel, uh, Keith. Oh, Here, well, yes, I just, uh, thanks, Terry. I just that's, said that's great. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, what I want to do is come back and, and just reiterate uh, on a couple of key points. Is number one, um, you know, through the, the infrastructure that we put in place uh, as a foundation with the Jira, the HipChat, etc., I think we've really built a, a great and effective way for this team to come together virtually. And it's been, you know, very impressive to see how people in, in the U.S., in Europe, in India, uh, and others are, are working seamlessly as a single team. So number one, I think that's a that's a great piece. Uh, but number two, uh, there's a lot of work left to be done, and I think there's a lot for, for people to get involved in. You know, one of the key things about uh, a large data warehouse like the, like the, uh, the Transmart platform is it really depends on data, uh, getting data in, and then doing this in ways that can be reproduced. So the data loading and ETL development is, is really critical. Um, and I think, you know, we've gone through the initial versions of getting data loaded, but the, one of the key things that continues uh, to go on is the scripting of ETL so that data sets can be loaded uh, in an automated way uh, and not require the, you know, kind of manual intervention that a lot of times uh, have, been, have been put together with that. So um, there's still a lot of effort there, and, and please, if you'd like to get engaged, there's a good place to get engaged. Um, Secondly, in terms of the functional testing and debugging, uh, I know we've had a lot of people get engaged, but we can use more help. Uh, there's a, a lot of functional testing to do. Uh, we've done a lot of scripted testing, which has been great, but there's also unscripted testing. Uh, and as we're doing this, one of the key things that, uh, that Rudy would, would like me to say, and, and, and I'll say for him, and I'm sure he'll reiterate, 
is that part of what we're doing in the testing is developing uh, video tutorials and materials that we can provide with the production release. So if you're involved in the testing, uh, we also want you to be involved in developing videos for those functions that can be used to demonstrate those for people new to the platform. And also developing a script that people can run through uh, with the data that's there uh, in that particular uh, application and you know, become familiar with the functionality. Uh, so that can go there. Uh, I think related to this, um, I see from, from Jesse that there's a question on is there a sandbox version that people can can work with. Uh, Terry, do you want to comment on that? Yeah, I'm, uh, in fact, I'm looking, there's a link on the wiki which I'll post as an answer to uh, Jesse's question uh, in just just a couple minutes. I was trying to track that down. Okay. Um, Gil, Gil also had a question about the um, uh, background of the, of the data, of the proteomics data. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I have an answer to that one. Do you, Terry? Well, I, just that uh, the we have brought in the data is being contributed by a number of very heavily involved sources, many of whom are in fact experts in in and specialists in the data, and a little difficult to to at this point to actually get the provenance on all of that um, off the top of my head. But we certainly have the uh, the information, and that will become part of the documentation as we um, move forward. In terms of providence and, and other issues of surrounding that, that is one of the issues the content committee is taking on. So yeah. uh, from that perspective, Brian is the right guy to talk to, and, and I think uh, Brian is on, and we can have him comment at the end. Okay, let's. Uh, I know we've got a big, uh, a big agenda. Let's keep keep moving here, and we can address some more of those issues at the end of the call. Um, just the other issue that I wanted to highlight is that the final sprint is on deployment and implementation, uh, and this is really where we want to to work out the the right uh, deployment configurations and document the deployment options for people. So we've done some testing around that, etc. And then to specify uh, these pre-configured and pre-built virtual machines, uh, so that people can can work from there. Uh, we expect that, uh, you know, after the 1.2, building from source is still uh, a little bit of a time-consuming process. Uh, one of the quick ways to get engaged with the platform, to test it, to, to get to work with it, is by working with a pre-built virtual machine. And that requires having some, some good configuration testing that uh, will be ongoing for this, the last two weeks of, of our sprints. Uh, if you have some expertise there as a systems engineer or a DBA, etc., uh, and would like to be engaged, again, contact uh, Terry Weymouth or, or Peter Rice. Uh, oh, and here it is. You can contact Terry Weymouth and Peter Rice. Uh, also, Kevin Smith, our <laughs> community manager, can connect you. Um, with respect to the uh, video tutorials, if you're doing testing um, and you'd like to know how to do the videos, how to make those useful, and, and get in contact there, uh, Rudy Potenzone is the person you want to get in touch with. And, and please do so. Uh, with that, what I'd like to do is turn it over to talking a little bit about once we have the, the platform completed, we have a production release, uh, what process will the foundation be going through to, to really facilitate that release and, and to, uh, to uh, disseminate this into the community? And for that, I'd like to ask Rudy to, to take over and, and walk us through the, uh, the release plans. Thanks, Keith. <clears throat> um, so uh, we, uh, the release, actual release of the platform will be on August 1st. It should be complete and everything together uh, at that point. Um, but being the end of the summer, um, we decided to, to let it um, be out there for a bit. Uh, and uh, I know the, the development team will be taking some time off as well uh, and really have our, our formal public launch uh, the first, actually the first full week, second week of September, uh, on September 9th. Uh, where we'll, we will have a worldwide launch event. Um, the plan is to have a uh, formal launch uh, on that day with two webinars, um, at least one in London and one in Ann Arbor, uh, Imperial College in London and University of Michigan. Uh, and these would be um, a webinar that would run approximately two hours in length, uh, the intention being to have an introduction, uh, an overview of what's in the release, uh, some uh, demonstration of the various capabilities um, that, that is in there, uh, uh, run through a few tutorials, uh, and hopefully uh, we're hoping to have a few of the experts who develop some of the key new features uh, actually present those uh, to us and, and show us um, not only 
you know, what buttons to push, but what's actually cool about that particular feature uh, operating on some real data sets that, that we can look at. Um, the, the goal, again, is to have these starting PM local time uh, at each site. Um, there will be uh, some overlap between the, the webinars, a uh, fair amount of overlap as we go over the basics, uh, but there also will be some unique content at each site. And we're also considering adding a Boston site um, for this as well. Um, and with that, I will uh, extend again my plea, and, and you'll hear it again in a minute, that uh, if you have uh, some data sets that you're working on and using for testing uh, that make a good story, that uh, really illustrate the, the value and the, you know, even especially some of the scientific um, uh, interesting uh, aspects of the new capabilities, uh, we'd love to hear from you uh, so that we can try to incorporate that uh, in some of this. Next slide. Um, and uh, along that line, then, so we will be taking um, what we can, uh, what we get uh, in terms of demonstrations, um, and building them both uh, in terms of building out our documentation uh, as well as a full training program. Uh, the documentation will, um, I'm sure, not be completely ready, um, but this will be an evolving thing that will have some of it ready for the actual launch in September, and then we'll evolve that into a more complete set of documentation as we go. Um, what we're looking for are, in particular, good demos that, uh, again, illustrate, you know, the, the various features. And uh, if you'd like to contribute something, it would be wonderful to get. Um, all we really need is, is a data set, uh, a script that basically you run through, uh, that, that you recommend to run through, and then a brief description, you know, of what it is. And we will work with you or we will do actually, we can actually do some of the uh, cr production pieces to turn it into uh, either, um, you know, a, um, a tutorial or, you know, incorporated into documentation, et cetera. Uh, in, in a similar vein, we are also then we'll be working uh, with some of our uh, colleagues uh, and some of our um, vendors to build out a training program that we plan to, to have available uh, later in September or into October, um, where we will have actual training programs, uh, training courses that will be done both uh, as a webinar or it could be actually done on site. Uh, and our hope is that these will be uh, a fee charge for these things, and this will help us to, to continue to grow uh, a very significant training program. Um, and all of this will be, uh, you have, you'll have hear more about it uh, in the coming weeks, but especially uh, at the launch event, we'll be talking a lot more about this. And I'll just chime in there, Rudy, that the, yeah, sure. the, the training program, uh, the fees will certainly be reduced or discounted for members, uh, and they'll be focused on both user training as well as some developer training. Exactly. Yep. Okay. The other thing that we've been working on in the within the marketing uh, effort is the rebranding of the foundation. Uh, next slide. Um, you know, we've we've got a really good start. We're, we've got a lot of exciting things happening, and so we've been looking for uh, a, just a, a kind of a. A, a new face uh, on, on what we're doing, and so we're working on websites, uh, at, uh, looking at a redesign to have it a lot more responsive and a lot more content uh, across the, the site. Um, we are working to bring a new logo for the foundation, and again, you'll see that uh, soon. Um, and we've been, uh, you, should have, you should be seeing more and more social media, you know, where we're trying to get information out there with tweets, we're, we're starting up a blog, uh, you know, on YouTube, we've got a growing set of videos, uh, not only these community meetings, uh, but some of the, the BioIT World uh, activities uh, are out there. And uh, thanks to the University of Michigan, Marcy Brandenburg, uh, and the students there have put together a set of tutorials already uh, for version 1.1. And if you haven't had a chance to look, they're, uh, they're very nice. And we'll be working with Marcy and, and her team uh, during the fall to get some of the 1.2 capabilities out there. And, uh, it's exciting to see these coming together, uh, and all of this will be much more, uh, much richer set of capability on the, the new website uh, when we release that. Uh, all this is really gearing up for a, a big splash launch in September uh, at the release event, uh, and then of course to support the community meeting, which is coming in October. So, on to the community meeting. The, the uh, annual meeting. Keith, you going to cover this? Oh, yeah, I can take this on. Thanks, Rudy. Uh, I'll run through it, and you can chime in uh, where it works. Sure. Um, okay. 
So in terms of the, the annual uh, meeting, uh, Kevin Smith has been taking uh, the lead really on helping us uh, put together the annual community meeting. But this is our large annual meeting. We had it last year in Paris, hosted by Santa Fe. Uh, this year, uh, it'll be October 14th through 16th. Um, it's hosted by University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, <clears throat> I believe, uh, to those of you who attended the, <coughs> excuse me, for those of you who attended the 2013 annual meeting in Paris, the, it will look very familiar with some additions to it. Uh, we'll also be having, uh, as opposed to last year, we'll have a poster session, an opportunity for people to present uh, work they've done there um, in a poster format. Uh, we're looking particularly for things coming from you know, postdocs and, and, and others that can contribute there. We'll have uh, working group meetings for each of our three C committees, the code, the community, the content uh, committees. Uh, we'll also be having uh, one of our two on-site uh, board meetings uh, will be held at the, at the meeting in Ann Arbor. And uh, there will be a number of foundation membership activities. Uh, and also what we're planning is a, a little bit of a celebration uh, of the version 1.2 release. Uh, so it's something you won't want to miss. Uh, we have put up the Eventbrite, so you can put this on your calendars, you can register. Um, uh, so that's transmart.eventbrite.com. Uh, and let's see if it's on the next slide. I think there's a, 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 we have a slide a little bit on sponsorship as well. Uh, so if you, if you can, uh, did you want to say something, Rudy? No, that's right. Okay. Yeah, there's another slide yet. Yep. Okay, it's coming up. Uh, registration site, as I said, transmart.eventbrite.com. Uh, all the key things you need to go are, are there. Uh, register early and reserve your spot. There is limited space, uh, so we need to make sure that we, we get people registered as soon as, as possible. Uh, we have an organizing committee that's meeting every two weeks now to establish the, 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 the agenda and the schedule. Uh, we're looking to bring on some nice uh, keynote speakers. We're out uh, working to, to bring them on board. Uh, but the, the organizing committee is made up uh, from the foundation, myself, uh, Brian Athey, who's representing uh, the host site, University of Michigan, uh, Kevin Smith, um, who is also at Michigan, but helping with uh, the foundation side, and then Rudy, our head of marketing. On the community side, uh, David Farouk from Santa Fe, um, who was the key organizer of the host site uh, last time, is there providing his insights and experience to, to help us along. Uh, Jay Bergeron, who's the co-chair of the code committee, uh, Sherry Kao, who's the, the co-chair of the community committee, and Suriman Oshara, who's the co-chair of the uh, content committee. So this is the, the organizing committee that's been brought together. We've established <coughs> the agenda. We're now establishing the speaking slots. Um, if you have a presentation you'd like to make um, and you'd like to submit that, uh, you can submit that to, to Kevin Smith uh, directly, or you can submit it directly to any of the members of the organizing committee who will also be reaching out to people uh, to recruit people for uh, different speaking slots. Um, in terms of, of other aspects of the community meeting, um, as the foundation has been maturing, uh, we've been adding sponsorship uh, events. Uh, we had uh, sponsorships for the BioIT World events that we did this spring, and that was uh, very successful. Um, we unfortunately didn't have enough sponsorship slots for people who wanted to sponsor. <coughs> Our goal is to uh, to give people you know some really good opportunities to sponsor at the annual uh, meeting here. Uh, there will be meeting level sponsorships. Uh, we're looking at gold, silver, and bronze. We, we like those colors. And uh, uh, specific event activity sponsorships. Uh, so we're going to have the welcoming reception on the Tuesday evening. Uh, we're looking for sponsors for that. We'll have a community meeting and dinner on Wednesday evening, and we're looking for sponsors for that. That will also include a keynote talk. Uh, and then we're looking for people to sponsor breaks in the morning and afternoons of each of the three days. Uh, Rudy uh, Potent Zone is, is coordinating the sponsorship program. Um, if you're one of our typical sponsors, we'll be in touch with you. If you have an interest in sponsoring, please get in touch with Rudy, uh, or you can come directly to me. Uh, and we'd like to get people signed up to, to help with that as well. And this will help you know, create a, a bigger and better meeting, I think, for the community. It provides people an opportunity to, uh, to present themselves to the community and uh, defray the cost of the foundation for the uh, for the meeting. So uh, with that, I think uh, those are the things we wanted to cover. Um, we've been a little bit long here. Uh, what I'd like to do is is number one, make sure that if you have suggestions for the monthly calls, you'd like to make a presentation, demonstrate something to us. Uh, please send those to the tf-community-suggestions at transmartfoundation.org, and uh, we'll get back to you. 
Uh, you can also send those directly to me if you'd like, and I, I can uh, get in touch with you from there. So with that, I'd like to open things up uh, for questions and comments. We'll address any questions that are in the question box. Um, and then uh, if people want to raise their hand to, to ask questions verbally, we'll unmute you on a one-by-one -one basis. Uh, with that, uh, let me get back to the question box. Um, I think uh, Jesse reposted his question. Did we post a, a response to Jesse's question, Terry? Yeah, um, Jesse had questions about uh, sandbox sites, uh, and I posted that. I don't know if everybody can see it, so I also sent it in a chat message to you, Keith. Um, and I am, uh, let's see, I do, does everybody see the public, if I respond publicly to, to the question about my email address and Peter's email address? Um, does everybody see, see that? The, I only see the private one, Terry, which you sent to me. Okay, that's Wait, chat. You need, send, um, you need to send to all. Yeah. Um, does do everybody does everybody see chat? <laughs> uh, I'm trying to figure out. I'm looking at questions. Oh, same question. Okay. You, you type an yeah. answer down in the, the box there. Yeah. Yeah. I think okay. if you type in an answer, I don't know if that goes to every. I think you have to hit send to all when you type in an answer. Okay. Exactly. All right. Let me yeah. try pasting this again. Uh. If Kevin were here, you'd know how much we need him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put three things in the chat window. The first is the wiki site for the sandbox slash test um, uh, machines, hosts, and uh, that um, that site you can go to to see the links to the two test hosts. Um, just understand that we're still testing these, and so you will encounter bugs. If you do encounter, when, when you do encounter bugs, please let Peter Rice or I know. Um, Weymouth at umich.edu is the point way to... Let me point out, yeah. Terry, that, that if, if you want to be a formal tester, we need to sign you into a few different systems, and you'll need an account yep. set up. And you need yep. to come to Terry for that. But if you do go into and you informally find some bugs, make sure you send those to Terry and Peter. Um, and so let's see. Happy to chime in on the content discussion. Brian, Brian Athey's online and, and uh, would like to say something about content. Okay, let's um, unmute Brian. Let's see. I think I can do that. Unmute Brian. Okay, Brian. Okay, I, I heard that I'm unmuted. You are. Well, first of all, as, as host of the community meeting, uh, I was very um, pleased to see the to the um, uh, reference, Keith, that you made of, uh, you know, Paris and Ann Arbor being comparable. That's a little bit <laughs> of a surprise. But, you know, be that as it may, we're really looking forward to it. Uh, we've had uh, several meetings of planning already, and we've got some dynamite keynote speakers lined up and uh, are lining up, and it's really going to be a lot of fun. And the, uh, and the combinations here in Ann Arbor will be great. And it's really a beautiful time of year, the autumn time of year. So, and, and you know, it's not going to be too cold. So it'll be really good. Uh, in terms of content, uh, Ceremon is also on the line. Uh, we are focused, you know, urgently right now on evaluating uh, the various uh, data and content that would be available for distribution at the time of launch. This doesn't give us much time, including metadata you know, and other data about the data in terms of st in standardized formats, lightweight, uh, so that, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, the work in August uh, leading to our demonstrations, uh, both in London and Ann Arbor on the 8th and, you know, future use uh, benefits from the data. So, uh, you know, I'm working, uh, you know, kind of one-on-one -on -one with uh, E.K. Gao at Imperial, and then uh, Ceremon and I will call separately soon, uh, a uh, uh, call for volunteers and a phone con like this so that we can discuss some of the um, uh, particulars. And, and Siramon, uh, I've asked Janet to reach out to you so that we can get started, you know, in the next few days. Uh, this is, uh, you know, an exciting opportunity to kind of create new, um, new territory for the field of open science. Uh, you know, there's a lot of folks interested in this. For example, I'm speaking to the editor of Nature Scientific Data you know, at 1.30 Eastern today, and um, they've expressed some interest in this kind of thing. And, you know, we're going to 
make new policies, implement them, and ultimately, um, you know, uh, break new ground in terms of data sharing, open data, and, uh, you know, being able to make the best use of the data for the demonstration. And so uh, uh, we'll be posting up some uh, notices uh, soon because we've got to get right at it. Ramona, do you want to say anything? Uh, let me unmute I, well, That might have been unfair given the, you, you know. I've unmuted her if she would like to say something. Yeah, okay. Well, maybe she's on mute. But anyway, we're working yeah. it together. And uh, there are also, uh, you know, we're talking to the people at Loney at the University of Southern California to have uh, the Alzheimer's disease neuroimaging data be released out of Loney in a TransMart uh, compatible format with the appropriate metadata, and those discussions are ongoing. So it's time to take the folks. Uh, you, I know uh, there's lots of folks been busy with Terry and the development team and Peter, and that pie chart was really remarkable. Uh, now we need a pie chart like that for the data, and we're going to be building such a group in the content committee, and you'll be hearing from us at all the, uh, you know, forward, uh, you know, monthly community calls. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I think we have uh, Jesse's question answered. I see a question from Vivek, and it looks like we've answered that, Kevin. Um, one of the questions yep. was uh, regarding data loading, etc. cetera. Yep. Um, so so um, uh, Devin asked, how do I participate in testing? Uh, please contact Peter or I. I put both of our email addresses into the chat window. Um, Matthew has his hand up. Um, Why don't we go ahead and call on Matthew? Yeah, okay. Let's unmute. Matthew, did you have a question? I, I unmuted you. Matthew, are you there? Matthew Demra? I don't hear anything. Uh, no, he just muted himself. He's so. muted, yeah, so maybe he's got a problem with his mic. Uh, Matthew, if you have a question and you're having a problem with your mic, you can pop it in the question He, he box. said no question in the question box. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I don't see anything else here. I think we, have we addressed all the questions? I believe so. Okay. Well, I think we've, uh, we've taken up uh, you know, almost the, the full hour here. I'd like to thank everyone uh, for coming and attending. Uh, it's, uh, I have to say, as, as the CEO of the foundation, the, the process that we've been going through over the past uh, couple of months with the version 1.2 development has been uh, an amazing community experience. Um, I've been getting emails from, from different members of the community, which have been, uh, I think, it, number one, incredibly supportive, but number two, I think, very enlightening. And I'll just point out one that, uh, that I got recently from, uh, from Julie at Rancho. And she pointed out uh, the key thing that, you know, her people are reporting bugs, and she felt initially like, where were those going? What's happening to them? And with the resources that we've been able to put up and, and see, and particularly the graph that, that uh, Terry showed today, is people can now see the bugs they report, the status of those bugs, uh, what the, you know, when those bugs get resolved, uh, and see overall how we're making real progress against that. And uh, I got a note from her just really appreciating the fact that she can now see that the efforts she's making are having an impact and that these things are not only being reported but being fixed and, and enriching the platform. And I've gotten several different emails like that and I think this is a, a real great thing for us as a community where we have people digging in, doing the things that they can do well, uh, being part of the community, helping report some of these key things and working with the development team and, and the rest of the team to make sure that those things are incorporated into the platform. So I strongly encourage people to keep that up, um, to, to keep engaged. You know, the, this is a community platform. The, the more that we all work together uh, to work on this platform to make it better, the, the better it's going to be and the better it's going to get. So uh, this has been a, a great process to this point, and I, I hope to see it keep going. And we're all looking forward to, uh, to the release on August 1st and then the launch uh, the first week of September. So with that, uh, thank everyone for, for your time and effort. Um, I don't know if anyone else uh, would like to say anything, I don't see an additional hands up. I'd like to thank Brian uh, for you coming. Uh, Gil's on the phone. I'd like to thank Gil for being here. And then uh, thank Terry and, and Rudy for their efforts today. And then uh, Kevin, who, who put this all together and, and we ran uh, based on his organization. Thanks again, and, and uh, we'll see you again uh, next month for the community call. Thank you.
thank you, Keith. If you can hear me for such Hi. great leadership, it's uh, it's phenomenal. Uh, and uh, the team, the development team, has been great. And uh, we've got a lot of things that to look forward to in the next month. Yeah, great. Thanks, Brian. Yeah.